lameness is a very broad term and uh, it's just like colic is a very broad term it just defines abdominal pain and then the causes are myriad of, of reasons and the lameness is the same thing horses can exhibit a lameness as a deficit in their gait but it could be the result of any number of conditions uh, ranging from laminitis or arthritis or tendonitis and sometimes neurologic conditions that have nothing to do with the actual musculoskeletal system can cause lameness so so it it definitely is a broad term probably the most common cause of lameness is arthritis obviously lameness can be a result of an injury so we can have an acute lameness that results from direct trauma to any area of the leg but probably the more common type of lameness that we see in the performance horse would be a result of wear and tear that, that uh, ensues after the horse's activities have taken the toll on a variety of tissues, whether they be soft tissues or hard tissues, so tendons or bones, but the joints seem to be the ones that pay the price the most for the wear and tear process. And as a result, probably the most common reason for us to ever evaluate horses for lameness is because they have arthritis somewhere. So when we uh, start our exam, we, we start by palpating the soft tissues of the leg. So we uh, primarily palpate the, the ligaments that are present in the cannon bone region of the horse. So this is just very standard palpation. We compare always to the other side. Um, since the horse is unlikely to tell us where things hurt, we kind of need to do it uh, different ways. Arthritis can develop in horses at a relatively young age. So even in the midst of their career where you would expect them to still be able to perform just fine, the jobs that we ask horses to do can oftentimes be extremely taxing on some joints and those joints eventually end up deteriorating enough to, to have arthritis happen and then lameness as a result. There's a lot of factors that can contribute to the onset of lameness. Probably the most important one would be conformational defects that the horse may have. So it's important that owners know how to recognize common conformational defects such as a toed in or a toed out conformation or in the rear limb an upright limb versus a slope behind end. So having the veterinarian advise them at the time of the purchase with regards to those things is really important. Other things clearly uh, that might play a role is, is the horse being overweight. Obesity is a cause of lameness in people and small animals and it's the same thing in the horse. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the main reason why horses become lame is because of the way that we use them. We, we use them, a lot of horses are high-end athletes and they're prone to injuries. And just like in the human field, if you're a high-end athlete, you're more prone to developing the wear and tear associated with your activity. Let's go through back palpation. Back soreness is fairly common in competitive horses. And then palpation of the rear limbs follows. This is the stifle region of the horse, and stifles are often a source of lameness in horses, so we need to make sure that we palpate both sides to ensure that there's not any joint swelling or any pain on palpation. We then will uh, pick up the rear limbs to palpate the soft tissues in those. Owners may not be able to recognize a subtle lameness, but things that they might want to look for is that if the horse has been used in a certain way for a period of time and then all of a sudden changes occur in the way that the horse is able to perform, and that might be shown as reluctancy to go on the trail ride or reluctancy to go over the fence or to maintain the frame during dressage or depending on the activity of the horse, the horse may just demonstrate an unwillingness to do its job, essentially. And and that might be totally incidental, or it might be worth a phone call to the veterinarian to see if there's something else going on. Horses usually don't lie, and so a keen owner should obviously know their animal and should recruit the help of the veterinarian as soon as possible to see if that change in behavior is related to a lameness issue. Next thing is to uh, put hoof testers on a horse. The horse's lamenesses are 70% of the times originate from, originate from their hoof. So it's important to test that their hoofs for uh, any lameness issues. Since it's kind of hard to squeeze the hoof with your fingers, you kind of have to use an instrument. And the instrument is called a hoof tester. So we just kind of work our way around the hoof while squeezing to make sure that 
He doesn't have a painful response. This horse is not reacting in any way to it. So one of the things that might have come out from watching the lameness exam is that lameness exams take time. They take a long time. As a matter of fact, in order to dissect the lameness down to where it originates from, one has to take the time to use different surfaces to, to move horses around because different terrains will elicit different problems. The grass will be more taxing on certain things like soft tissues versus the concrete might be more taxing on the hoof. And so we tend to use as many tools as we can to get to the root cause of the lameness. And that's the hardest part of lameness workup is that the horse shows a lameness on a limb, but you have no idea where the origin of that lameness is. It might be coming from the back, it might be coming from the hip region, it might be coming from the cervical spine. It, it, could, it could be any number of places. And it's not uncommon at all that uh, we would have clients come to the university and ride their horses. And that's the whole reason why we have this lameness area is because they will get on the horse's back and demonstrate, demonstrate what they actually see when the horse, or feel when the horse is lame. And that's really vital information. One of the most rewarding ways to, to identify the source of lameness is to have an educated rider on the horse that tells you, this is what I feel, and then you can see it from the ground. Then you can match the interpretation of the trainer or the rider with what you're actually seeing, and then it, things make a, make a lot more sense.